Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace in South Africa on the Ferry Glen Reserve. It's the home of some of the big five, the elephants and the rhino and the zebras, etc. Right behind me are some elan. These are the largest antelope in the animal kingdom. So right now, because we can get pretty close to these guys, I am shooting with this. This is a 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 Nikon lens with a D800. Now, uh, normally with a lens like this, what you would normally do is to shoot in shutter priority. You want to keep your shutter speed really fast. But what I know I want to do is I want to keep my aperture wide open so that I get that shallow depth of field and let the background drop out. And so I'm going to do the reverse. I'm actually going to shoot in aperture priority mode and open my aperture wide open to 5.6. Now what that's going to do is it's going to force the camera to shoot at the fastest shutter speed because it's really bright today. So I'm going to get the benefit of both things, the wide open aperture and the fast shutter speed. So at 5.6 right now, I'm shooting at about two and a half thousandth of a second, which is plenty fast enough to get a nice solid shot. Now what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the tripod that's holding that camera and I'm going to be putting it on this camera because of space limitations. We only had room for one tripod today. So I am going to be shooting as much as possible on a tripod and that will eliminate some of the need to shoot at really fast shutter speeds and higher ISO. So one of the things that I like to do is shoot with a monopod when I need to have a lot of mobility with a big long lens instead of a tripod. Now the nice thing about this tripod is you can take the center column out, take this leg, it comes off. Then what we can do is we can get rid of those two legs, stick this on here, it screws together, and this becomes a nice monopod that I can use with that big long lens. Well, before we get going too far, this is Dion and he is the guide today. He's driving us all over the place and making sure that we're safe. And he told me that we're not as close as I thought we were and we can actually get closer. So we're actually gonna walk as close as you tell us to. So let's go and let's, let's see how close we can go to these amazing animals. Okay. Let's try to get a little bit closer, yeah. Okay. Can we get closer? There are rhinos right here. I am, have the camera on a tripod for stability. I have the aperture wide open at 5.6, aperture priority mode and letting the camera determine the shutter speed because I can shoot a little bit slower with this uh, tripod here. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth between the rhino. I'm shooting at about 800, uh, between 800th and 1,000th of a second. Aperture wide open at 5.6 and I'm able to get some really crystal clear pictures. I'm shooting the rhino back here, but right over there, we can pan the camera over. There are a bunch of zebras, and so I was able to swing my camera around and get these zebras on the ridge with the water. When you're shooting something, make sure you're looking around your environment, because I would have missed those zebras over there had I just been focusing on these rhino. They're getting a little bit closer, so we're gonna keep shooting, and then I'll show you these pictures. Oh, that's beautiful. Look, he's giving us a profile. We already have the shots of the rhinos, but they're very, very close. And Dion here has been sort of staring them down with a stick. And so what I want to do, I'm using my 35 millimeter lens to get an environmental portrait of Dion and this very dangerous rhino who keeps coming closer and closer and scaring the living daylights out of me. This is closer than you ever want to be to a rhino. I'll tell you that. And 
And so <laughs> what I'm trying to do, focusing at hyperfocal, trying to get a shot of Dion and the Rhino. We're about 30 yards from a Rhino. So my point is that since we got the pictures of the Rhino already, I wanted to get a, an environmental portrait of Dion and the Rhino in his environment with his vehicle. So I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter lens to try to get all of that and tell a story about him working in his environment. So I don't want to just shoot the animals in the reserve because there are a lot of people here that are working and doing some amazing things. And I'd love to get pictures of them doing what they normally do every single day. What an amazing experience this has been. Terrifying, but absolutely amazing. have these elephant because they're quite a distance away I want to use some stability here so I'm going to use the tripod thank you and it's sort of obscured by these plants but oh my gosh so beautiful a thousandth of a second 500 millimeters ISO 320 much much larger than the elephants I've seen in India and throughout Asia and Thailand um, by like six feet taller maybe even more than that can i walk down this road any yep. okay i'm gonna walk down the path and see if i can get uh, a viewpoint that doesn't sort of show the road so i'm making sure to listen to dion because i don't want to do something that's not smart because these are wild animals they know us they know my voice they know but I mean, it's not a tame animal at all. Okay, I've been told to get the hell out of here. So, okay. He is not liking me. I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter lens. It's huge. Hi there. What I'm learning over and over on this safari is exactly what Elsa talked about last night, and that is to be prepared for anything. The multiple camera bodies, different focal lengths is really paying off. And as you just saw, I went from shooting an elephant in the distance at 500 millimeters with this guy to jumping on the truck and shooting an, a different elephant really close with a 35 millimeter and a different body. There wasn't enough time to switch lenses and get things ready. We just had to be ready to go in a moment's notice. And I think that's how it is when you're shooting in wide 
wildlife at any moment, uh, especially when you're on a, a game reserve like this or out on safari. You just need to be ready for anything. So maybe if you don't have multiple bodies, maybe you have a friend that you're going with and you could switch back and forth those different camera bodies. Or uh, if you have small cameras like this, maybe you want to have a couple of them, one that's zoomed in, one that's zoomed out, because it's really, you got to be ready to go at a moment's notice. Well, we're trying to find the lions and uh, on this bumpy road and stuff, the, we've had no luck. And um, so we might not see any lions today, but uh, hopefully we'll see some along the path here. But there are some times that they, you, they just hide so well, uh, they can't be found. So uh, with any luck, ah, and some bumps here, maybe we'll find some guys. And just like that, lion. That's just crazy. Oh, oh, dang it. We're just trying to find the lion here. You just would not, you would not see this lion unless you really, really look hard. There he is. Okay, so one of the issues here with the lion in these bushes like this is the autofocus is not going to work because it can't distinguish the bushes in the foreground from lion inside these bushes. And so I'm having to manually focus this. It's just one of those things that you really have to watch for uh, when you're shooting something like this with a lot of, of uh, objects in the foreground. So we'll do our best, but if he doesn't come out of the bushes, we just get what we get. The lion went back to a, a different spot now. We're trying to move where we can get a shot of him. The problem is, we're, oh, there he is, perfect. Ah, beautiful, he's beautiful. He's just sitting there right in that dappled light. What an adventure this has been, and I absolutely have to thank Fairy Glen Reserve for uh, hosting this and letting me stay here for a day, a night, and another day. But I think uh, if you'll allow me to sort of go through the things that I learned, it was quite the learning experience. The first thing I think that was not obvious to me was how much I shot with a wide angle lens. I thought I might take one or two pictures with my Leica, to be honest with you, but I shot with my 35 millimeter lens quite a bit. I shot the elephants, I shot that environmental portrait of uh, Dion. I uh, was able to shoot with a 50 millimeter lens and get really close to those lions during our uh, evening hike. And I think that's one of my favorite shots of the entire trip. But the other thing that I think Elsa really helped me understand, I mean, she told me about it beforehand, was to have many, many different focal lengths and the zooms and be prepared for anything, but it really didn't sink in until I started shooting because you really don't have time to get ready once an animal is approaching you. You have to be ready to go. And so having all those options uh, just ready for me was really, really key. Now, the other thing that you want to consider if you're taking that trip of a lifetime, maybe you're going to South Africa or Kenya or wherever that might be, uh, is to consider if you're going to go to a national park like Kruger or if you're going to go to a reserve like Fairy Glen. The difference is in a reserve like this, the uh, animals are in their natural environment and they're roaming free, but it's a much, much smaller space and it's managed and so you're almost guaranteed to see a lion and a zebra and a rhino and uh, most of the big five. If you go to a place like Kruger, you don't have that guarantee at all. You have to really be patient and probably choose one animal that you're going to try to photograph and then it might take you a day or two or five. There are no guarantees, even in a reserve like this. The other thing that I learned about patience is that animals run away they hide, they go into places with bad light, and so you have to really be patient and react to the animals and let them take the lead because you're not in control when it comes to these big animals like this. Um, I learned that staring into the eyes of the lion and looking at the rhinos. And so be patient, be prepared for anything, and do a lot of planning. And the other thing is 
if you're in a local place like this, you want to get somebody like Elsa Hoffman. Elsa, Elsa, come on in here. I really want to thank you. So Elsa Hoffman, phototourscapetown.com. That's her business. She has shown me all around Cape Town, outside of the city, uh, allowed me to shoot pings, all kinds of things. And so just being able to uh, make contact with you and have you show me all of these amazing things has made my two weeks here in Cape Town so much more rewarding. And so uh, if you're in Cape Town, make sure you look up Elsa because she will uh, take you on a tour that's tailored to you. And so that's what I really enjoy it. So thank you so, so You're much. Welcome. And I have to say thank you to South Africa because South Africa has been one of the most amazing places I've been anywhere in the world. And thank you for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free. That way you don't miss a single episode and you have all these wonderful contributors from all over the world making videos all about photography, videography, even recording audio and all kinds of things. So check that out, click subscribe, and I uh, will see See everyone and you on the next episode of Exploring Photography. Thanks again. I'll see you again next time.